No, but I really think like if you really want to engage in this world, right. if you really want to make change, if you really want to uh, make a space where you feel embraced, then you have to make that space. Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of the Kincaid Mix and today we have our first guest Jahan Sharif. Hello. Please Jahan tell them about yourself. Thank you for having me. My name is Jahan. Uh, I am born and raised in South Florida and met you in New York but now I live in LA. Yeah. I met him about five years ago through our mutual friends William and Tim. That's true. And I met him in July, so July will make it five years. So Jahan, yes. we, this whole thing is about, the Kincaid Mix is about talking about being biracial, which you are, so please tell our viewers, what are you mixed with? I am half Jamaican, half Pakistani. My mm -hmm. mom is Jamaican, my dad is Pakistani. Right. And so I was just listening to you just now, and you said half Jamaican, half Pakistani. Uh huh. And it made me think that you did not identify as half Asian or half black. Yeah, I think you're touching on something that is really important, which yeah. is the difference between ethnicity and race. You know, mm -hmm. race is, as we have learned, is a social construct, right. mm -hmm. and ethnicity is biology. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, where you're, it's not biology so much, but it's like more close to your DNA. Right. So I'm half Jamaican, half bi Pakistani, that's what my DNA is, right. mm -hmm. but my race, I suppose is more fluid depending on where I am because, you know, being in South Florida, my part of South Florida, I grew up in Miami, most people thought I was Latino, mm -hmm. you know, to be quite honest with you because most people there are Cubans or Venezuelans or Colombians or Dominicans or, and so from, from their racial construct, mm -hmm. I would fit into, you know, a, an Afro-Latino, which is also black right. because in America that is the racial construct that we operate in so if you ask me what my ethnicity is or my you know I would be Jamaican Pakistani my race I'm black so you just mentioned Florida growing up in Florida the land of the strange right so yeah. what was that like growing up in Florida and well, it was very strange uh -huh. to be honest <laughs> I mean Florida is a really weird place right you should believe all of the news that comes out of Florida uh -huh. Um, so I grew up in outside of Miami, literally the dot between Miami and Fort Lauderdale. And so we used to have a saying that even though we were in the most southern part of South Florida, we used to say that you have to go north to get to the south because Miami Fort Lauderdale is much more like South America. So I actually grew up speaking Spanish. And so we lived in a very sort of like alternative universe sometimes it feels like. Looking at John, you probably can tell that, you know, he's a very poised gentleman. What was it like as a man of color growing up with privilege? Yeah, I mean, both of my parents are physicians and both of my, um, everybody in my family is highly educated and I think um, even that sort of upbringing that I've had has allowed me to think about and view the world in different ways that, uh, that we describe as privileged. I think that being said, uh, I'm also a black man in America, and that comes with its own sets of privileges. Frankly, I feel like that is a privileged state to be a black person in this country. But society doesn't necessarily recognize or value the things that I see as privileges in the same way. And so being able to have a foot in multiple worlds, I think, is the ultimate privilege, if you think about it. Because not only am I able to recognize uh, what I bring to the table, I'm also able to recognize myself outside of what society says about me and to be able to think differently about it and say, you know, how am I going to see what I see when I see in the mirror and I look at myself and recognize as a positive asset mm -hmm. and how can I use my lived education growing up uh, to say how can I frame this so that other people can see it too and, and possibly, you know, impact how they think about me because I think one of the biggest tragedies of our country is that people have a perception of themselves and society for many reasons doesn't allow that to be seen and and that's a disservice to everybody because I think everybody has privilege and the ability to bring yourself into the world is what is what makes the world an exciting and beautiful place to live and so I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'm just glad that men of color can recognize that they do have privilege because it's just something about I don't know, it's just the yeah. entire system is just so... I mean, there's a difference, there's a distinction that I think you're touching on, the distinction between self-worth mm -hmm. and sort of like 
privilege or like how the world recognizes the worth that you have. You know, this cancel culture that we kind of have right now where somebody says something halfway sideways and it's like, you're dead to me now, that's also not constructive. So if I approach the situation with giving the other person the benefit of the doubt, which is what I want ultimately at the end of the day, then hopefully we can both um, move to a place where we can now pay that forward in other ways and, and little by little we can make change that we want. So speaking about something on a much larger scale, mm -hmm. let's talk about media in the United States. Okay. There is this sort of, I would like to say, trend now of recognizing biracial. The hit ABC show Blackish now has a spinoff called Mixed Dish that's about to premiere this fall. And I just found it so fascinating because before, it seems even if you were mixed race, you it's ignored. You yeah. are seen as the minority. Well, we were the minority before. Mm -hmm. Our demographics are definitely changing. Mm -hmm. And people like you and me, we are slowly becoming what the typical American, you know, is going to look like to right. some extent. And maybe it's not black, white or Jamaican, Pakistani or whatever it is. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's going to be nuanced. And I think our media and our politics in time will evolve to reflect the nuance that our society is now demanding. You know, I am a black man in America, and I am also Jamaican, Pakistani, and I am also gay, like, and I am also this, and, and I'm also that, and we are building, our generation is building a culture that is able to hold space and embrace all of the multiple identities that I bring, and it makes sense that our culture and our media should reflect that. Also, the funny thing about that is, you, I would have thought that this would have been more of what was happening when Barack Obama was in office. Started, it started. It started. It started. But the funny thing is, it's happening more now that Trump is in office, and I feel like because it's gone to such an extreme mm -hmm. with what's happening, I feel like sort of trying to bring the balance back as far as... Yeah, I mean, Trump is really holding a mirror to the country. Yeah. It, he's, there's no neutral, neutral when you come to Trump. Right. Either if, you, if you're not against him, then you're for him. Mm -hmm. And when that says something, you know, and, 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 and that's just the fact of it. So where do you stand? You know, I think that's causing us to have a lot of other conversations that, frankly, President Obama allowed us not to have because he was Barack, you know, like he had it under control and everybody felt okay just going to bed. But now with Trump out there, it's like, no, are you going to stand up and say something or are you going to put your head in the sand? If you put in your head in the sand, I see you. Copy that. If you want to change, then you got to get out there and do the work and make it because it's not going to happen. Right. It's not going to happen without it. Well, you heard the guy. This was such a great interview. I just want to thank you again, Jahan, for being a part of this. Thank you. Once again, everyone, Jahan Sharif. If you're more interested, if you want to find out more about Jahan, you can follow him on Instagram at Jahan Sharif. And also on iTunes podcast, his podcast is Jaja Is. So once again, thank you, everyone. And until next time, take care. Bye.